Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. I am elated today to bring you a guest that I have been wanting to have on the show for so long. And, you know, we tried to actually make it work a few years ago during COVID, but it didn't pan out. But she's here today, and I'm actually glad that we waited because she's been through a lot of life changes, and I feel like we have so much more to talk about. So welcome, please, the one and only Jada Stevens. Hi, guys. So Jada, um, first of all, great to see you. It has too. been a minute. I know. Um, we do have so much to talk about, and it's funny because we were really like getting into it before we even started recording. But you know, I like to always kind of start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me a little bit about growing up and how you found your way into the adult industry because you were 18 when you started, right? Yeah, so especially 18. I was already dancing at a strip club in Atlanta, so I feel like that kind of like opened the doors. Um, to be comfortable to be on camera naked and mm -hmm. doing things. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much like what I was doing before. And I ended up meeting like somebody that um, worked in Miami for Bang Bros. And they were like, oh, like you would be great at this job. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. You know, so I took the chance. I didn't have a boyfriend at the time. So I took the chance, went to Miami, shot for Bang Bros. And here I am. How was that first experience? Do you remember who it was, it was with? I, who was, I think, was it J-Mac? Preston or J-Mac, I can't, maybe Preston for the first one, then J-Mac, but it was scary. I'm such a shy person in real life, like, unless I'm comfortable, like, or I know you, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, I'm pretty shy, so it was actually pretty scary, because I was like, oh my god, what do I do? But then, like, after I did it, I was like, oh, that wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I kept doing it, kept doing it, but I'm such a shy person, so still to this day, if I were to go shoot a scene, I'll be giddy, like, in the beginning, you know, yeah. until I get in my zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What was like some of the things that you were nervous about? Was it just being on camera? Was it about doing it right? Was it about like how it would affect your life? I mean. I think that I, what's crazy is I didn't think about how it would affect my life at first. And that that's probably what I should have thought. But right. I, I was thinking more of like, is it going to look good? Like what I looked like, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, does mine look like everybody else's? Mm -hmm. Like that type of stuff. Because yeah. I was young, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you think any you the criticism you get that we got back then is not the same. Yeah. Because now people were harsh with yeah. like things back in the day versus now. Yeah. It's yeah, more yeah. accepted and people are just, of course, you're going to hear negative stuff, but you, you hear a lot more positive stuff. Um, but yeah, I was more nervous. Like I said, more of what I looked like if I was doing it right. But I feel like that's how I got better. I think I was always pretty good, but I think I got better by mm -hmm. doing more and more and more. Yeah. <laughs> now, because you were 18 coming in, you know, there's been, there's a lot of people talk about like is 18 a good age is it a bad age should you be older like wh what's your experience with that I definitely feel that you should be older I feel like your mindset at 18 still isn't like for me like mm -hmm. a grown adult with making great decisions but mm -hmm. I mean you know I was definitely mature for an 18 year old but I still think you should be older mm -hmm. to do porno <laughs> but it worked out for you yes yeah thank goodness so you did those scenes for bang bros and then how did your career move forward from there well, I was with a small agency down there, and I feel like they took me to L.A. for the first time, and I started going on go sees and ended up meeting with um, Derek. L.A. Direct was huge at the time, so, like, I ended up taking the chance and signing with him and shooting for bigger companies. Like, so that's, like, really where it started for me mm -hmm. in L.A. Was there – what was the first, like, big company that you shot for where you felt like, oh, this can actually be so much more than – just like an amateur kind of thing. hustler yeah yeah okay because that was like really like you know when you think of stuff i always thought playboy and hustler were like mm -hmm. you know, i was like oh my god oh my god so like when they called to book you or whatever i thought it was a big deal and i think there's many more companies but that was the first one where i was like oh my god like I'm yeah in LA. i'm gonna be a big porn star <laughs> was it for one of their videos or was it for the magazine? It was for the videos. It was like scary big dicks. It was, um, I forget <laughs> his name, like Rick something. Um, he used to shoot all their crazy stuff. So like crazy, you know, yeah. crazy young girl sites, you know? <laughs> yeah. Were there any performers that you worked with in your early days that you kind of looked up to and felt like that's like where I want to go? Or were you just sort of doing scenes and day by day yeah I really wasn't I've never I never really watched porn like that and I never really like knew but I knew once I got in and I started meeting people who I kind of like idolized like I think it was like Christina Rose Jenna Hayes that era mm -hmm. you know what I mean like it was right before me so I always like looked up to yeah those girls yeah um so you're definitely known for your ass yes. obviously um 
But big butts weren't really like the look when you got into the industry, right? No. So like how were you nervous about that? Did you ever get any kind of flack about like your ass or was it always an asset? <laughs> it's definitely an asset now. But I would say like it really wasn't a thing when I got in the industry and actually coming from the South, like a lot, it just wasn't a thing. Like people really didn't like big butts back then. It's really crazy. I mean, not, I can't say everybody, but a lot of people. And then in the industry, it was more like still blondes and big boobs was mm -hmm. the thing when I got in. I think me and Alexis Texas really set the tone for like big butt white girls. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Pogs, no, definitely. as they would say. Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> so um, now most of your scenes are anal. Yes. Like when was your first anal scene? Um, I would say probably like. I was 19 turning 20. Okay. So you'd been in the industry for like a little bit before yeah, you did. Yeah. They try and to prolong that as long as they can, yes. but I was like all in at that point. <laughs> had, did you do anal a lot in your personal life? No, but I had tried it. Okay. And so you knew that it definitely it... wasn't like porn anal, but right, <laughs> right, right. was trying it. <laughs> so what pushed you to do anal? I mean, was it like, did you, were you doing like a big showcase? Were you getting a lot of money or? It was definitely more money, but I feel like nobody was really doing. So this is the thing for me. And I feel like it took me far and made my career is like nobody was doing IR and nobody was doing anal like that, especially mm -hmm. white girls with black guys. So mm -hmm. I found my way. That's something I did in my personal life. So I was like, I took that and kind of ran with it, even though my agents weren't happy about it. Yeah. But I was really successful. It's pretty much why I'm here. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of wild, right? To look back at those times. I mean, now it's, you know, hindsight's 2020, 20, like the fact that it mm -hmm. was, you know, like a, a milestone to shoot with like a black performer. Yeah. Like, how do you, like looking at that now and, and where you're then and where you're at now, like, do you have any thoughts about that? I mean, I love to see it how it is now because mm -hmm. I feel like we progressed a lot in that sense. Yeah. You know? um, but then I just always like did what I want. Like I've yeah. always just done what I want. I didn't care. Like the rate I didn't care like what you know the mm -hmm. thought of what people were gonna think at the time and so like that was the crazy part for me but I'm glad I did you know stick to yourself and like what you yeah feel, you know but your agent was trying to pull you back from that yeah because for whatever reason I feel like they try to make it a bigger deal so you can get more money and mm -hmm. all of this but at the end of the day like I just never felt like that was something to get more money for I got more yeah. money with showcases bookings like doing bigger scenes like gangbangs whatever you know so i didn't look at it like for a skin tone yeah like more money you know yeah yeah i know it's actually um i mean ultimately it's it's totally like racist yeah and it's know? like it's but it was acceptable at the time <laughs> it was which is i just crazy. know i just remember how mad my agent got at me he's like you ruined your career he's like i could have got you so much more money and i was like well i just did what i wanted to honestly. yeah like yeah. i never looked at it when they first asked me do i do ir i'm like what the hell is that like i didn't even consider it ir i didn't yeah. think of it like that so yeah just the thought process i'm glad to see it is where it is now yeah i mean you must also feel like good about your decisions now be like dude i was right all along yeah like, you always do with what you feel is right you know yeah. what I mean? And what you want to do, like not what other people want you to do. Yeah. So tell me about your first anal scene. What was that like and who was it with? Um, who was my first anal scene with? Oh my goodness. It's crazy. Put on the spot. There's so many. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to say, this is going to sound crazy, but I want to say it was either like Shane Diesel or Mandingo. Like we're one of my first ones. So it's two kind of, of blurry, like the biggest dicks in the yeah, industry. Yeah, I know it sounds in extreme. I know, but it was so. Like, I mean, whose decision was that, and how did you feel about that? I think it was definitely like um, Bang Bros' decision, as far as like you know the blacks on blondes is what it was for. So mm -hmm. um, just for the aesthetic of it, but I tried it because like I was just down at the time like to do big things, and it's like they actually like push your ego you know, when you can do these things. So mm -hmm. after like I got was getting those boosts, you know, as young, it boosts boost your self-confidence, everything. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to try everything that people weren't doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, So yeah. Shane Diesel was huge. Shorty Mac was huge. Like these guys were all big like challenges, you know what yeah. I mean? So that's like where I was at with that. But it was still nervous. I was still scared. <laughs> yeah. How did you prepare for it? Um, I didn't really know as much when I first started. But I mean, they kind of tell you a little bit here and there, you know, but basically I didn't eat. Like that's the, <laughs> that was the only for sure way I knew I was going to prepare for yeah, it. Yeah. It was to be totally clear. But that's pretty much like all I, I did to pre 
care back then, you know. So what what is your process now? I mean, obviously, you know your body a lot more now. A lot better. I mean, I still don't eat the night before. <laughs> if I eat anything, it's like a banana or something. But And then you just clear. I mean, really, just for me, is being in a good headspace before. So it's like the more calm I am. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm stressed, I don't like to shoot on those days because mm-hmm. I just feel like it's it's all muscles. It's all, it is. I need to be relaxed. Totally. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, what is the craziest thing that you've put up your ass for a scene? <laughs> I think we touched on this at a point, but I feel like, um, probably like milk enemas, whipped cream cans and golf balls. Wow. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about how like the milk enema works. Cause not everybody has seen one of those. No. And it's definitely like a whole niche. I feel like, um, you know, so obviously you would have to super clean out because you don't want chocolate milk. Um, <laughs> But, I don't know why I wasn't <laughs> expecting that. Because it's it's like literally focus on your asshole and like the whipped cream. So it's like there's no room for any anything else, you know. <laughs> but it's crazy how like strategic Jason was like the king of the kings of this stuff back in Evil Angel days. And like mm-hmm. he would cut the whipped cream cans and like kind of like melt the top so it was like smooth. So we can literally just stick it up our ass, oh. you know, and like push it. So then yeah, because they're kind of sharp. It's sharp. It'll cut you. you yeah. Know? Like the skin's thin back there. So he had like the special little way. And then he would, uh, that's how we would get the whipped cream up there. Mm-hmm. But obviously it's still dangerous to put aerosol like yeah. anywhere up there. But you don't think about that. You're young. You're like, right. oh, yeah. okay, this looks cool, you know? And just, I feel like there was like extreme girls back then. So we were all like just down to do like crazy shit. Like, yeah. It was like Amy Brooke. There was just crazy girls and they did way crazier stuff than me. But when I was around girls like that it would make me I'll be like oh yeah let me try this yeah up for the challenge but the whipped cream's crazy I feel like it's not one of my favorite things to do and then also we would put milk like it would be like rice milk or like soy milk in like you would empty an enema and put it in there and then you would shoot that up there so you would literally like shoot the shoot it back out your ass it's just a really like (laughs) crazy niche but it's so it's crazy and then your partner would drink it out of your butt right yeah or we would have like he had like these little like racetrack things so she would be at the bottom and you would like push it out and it would go down these tracks and just like like a little hot wheels (laughs) it's just fucking crazy wow (laughs) it's crazy now to reminisce on those things because then that's when you're in the moment you don't think of it you're just like oh this is crazy but not like how it is now you're like this really sounds crazy. <laughs> yeah. And those were, that was in the early days of the internet when I think people were pushing the envelope so much because you could, because yeah. before you were so restricted by distribution, you mm-hmm. know, um, DVDs could only like certain states where they didn't allow anal. So like certain DVDs couldn't go to that state. Right. Canada had a lot of restrictions. So it was, it was tricky. I know like with magazines, we didn't shoot penetration until the right. internet came along because then it, it pushed that envelope mm-hmm. and, and i think once there was this place that you could release content and you kind of had no restrictions because mm-hmm. the distribution was worldwide people just went crazy it was like the porn olympics no it really is and i feel like they what did they kind of like go back to like um what's the word not monitoring but there's still certain things you, you can't do mm-hmm. now yeah since then you know like Max Hardcore always shot crazy stuff. Like yeah. when I was coming into the industry, that was like crazy. And then they were like, oh no, like you can't shoot stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Well, it dep- it, it's because Visa and MasterCard have come down pretty hard on mm-hmm. um, certain things. You know, they won't process for you. That was because of the scare with the, the whole Pornhub thing right. that happened. Um, but I think it like it's weird because I guess it like depends on the site because some sites are stricter than others. Mm-hmm. I guess like some sites are more afraid of losing their billing than other ones are. I don't know. It's it's kind of a weird mix. Or bag. different shot maybe in different parts of the world too. I know that like Europe and Budapest always shoot crazier stuff than yeah. they feel here. In yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. Did you? So you mentioned Max Hardcore. Did you ever work with him? No, but because my agents didn't, you know, recommend me to. You Smart. know, but it was like he was a big deal like Mm -hmm. when i got in the industry everybody was like if you were a dirty girl and i feel like that's ultimately like i wanted to prove that i was a porn star that i did it all because i felt like porn stars like did it all yeah yeah yeah. like anal dp and just crazy stuff but i'm glad that in certain sense i listened to some of my agents you know yeah just not about certain things i always felt like i knew what i what was good for me but i also knew that they know a little bit of what's going to be a good look and what's not going to be or if you're going to be happy. You know yeah, I, mean? I was just going to say, because it's like he was very much about 
not just like hardcore sex scenes because mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that do that that are so like respectful to the performer you yeah. know like they check in with you and if it's like mm-hmm. too much they'll pull back like his not. goal was literally to break girls down mentally yeah and like make them cry i remember L- rebecca linares mm-hmm. did a scene with him and she was like she was wild you yeah. know like that girl was hardcore mm-hmm. and yeah he like traumatized her yeah that's so crazy how and that's why i'm glad i never really did anything that traumatized me or i was like regretted yeah you know what i mean but i'm glad that i definitely listened with certain things you know so you don't have any scenes that you did that you regret no i mean i have scenes that i did that i wasn't like partial to like i gang bangs i tried one or two it just wasn't my thing but i don't regret it it was something an experience i wanted mm-hmm. to experience it and i did it but nothing that i was like oh my god i wish i would have never did that yeah you know? what was it about gang bangs that didn't appeal to you i'm like I don't know. It's just too much stimulation. Yeah. I feel like it was too much going on. My body told me that, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So like my body was rejecting it before, you know, my yeah. mind was, you know what I mean? But it looked amazing. It served its purpose. So I feel like it was, but it just, I like, I'm more, as I've even gotten older, I'm more of a one-on-one mm-hmm. sexual person. Like even a threesome is too much for me. You Interesting. Know? Adding women is different, but as far as men, you know, yeah. as I've gotten older, I've, I just like more one-on-one. Yeah. Um, time no that makes sense that makes sense what are your favorite kinds of scenes to shoot i love i mean obviously i love anal but i really do like doing regular boy girl scenes but i never really did much of that Mm -hmm. um pretty much majority of them are anal but i feel like i also had a boyfriend in the beginning of the industry and i always try to like save my pussy for him Mm. so in my mind i thought i was like you know But I was like, saving her, you know? Yeah, it's like it's like, it's like the religious kids that, like, have anal so they yeah. can take virginity for marriage. Yeah, so that's, like, how that started. And then I was like, uh, so you'll see a little, you know, play with that, but it's mainly all anal. Yeah. Was dating hard for you? <laughs> yes, it still is. Yeah. You know, it's something I feel like that we kind of, like, give – I don't know how, to, how I'm trying to word this. It's kind of like what you get when – you know, like you in this industry, you have to give up something Mm -hmm. and it makes it very hard. I'm not going to say it's like impossible, but it Mm -hmm. just makes it a little harder. What is some of the challenges that you face? Like what what are the things that come up the most for you? I guess just attracting really the right person. I Mm -hmm. feel like it can attract the wrong, just the wrong type of person, but also to just like trust and just having somebody understand i feel like that's like some, you'll it's going to be very rare to find somebody that truly understands that this is work and nothing more nothing less like yeah that you can come home and you can be normal i'm such like i when i'm in a relationship like i'm a, it's like a double life you know like i come home i'm a totally different person mm-hmm. it's literally on set so i just think that i don't know finding a right person that can understand the lifestyle yeah and really love you unconditionally because i feel like a lot of this like you'll meet people and it's just they conditionally love you yeah for what you can do and what you know right. do you get that on? that situation where you start dating a guy and he's like excited to be dating yeah. jada stevens yeah and then like once you're in a relationship he's like mm-hmm. wait a minute this thing that i liked you for before <laughs> yeah. is now a problem for me yeah they're attracted to the light and then they want to dim it later and you know make you feel a type of way i've, I've had that in multiple relationships it's like yeah. they're so they fall in love with a porn star and then they don't want you to do things or make you feel a type of way for have doing things, you know? Mm-hmm. So I still have hope that the right guy's out there. But. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I do. I do for you too. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about literally one of the worst days that I ever had on set, which was with Jada, <laughs> but it was not her fault. She was a fucking trooper, but um, we definitely have, we have some history together with that. And then, um, the huge life change that she just had um, about two years ago. So stick around. We'll be right back. Hey, guys. This episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. Now, we're diving into something a little bit more personal with this, but it's also incredibly important to talk about, yes, ED. And it's also about confidence, that special bedroom confidence. Listen, it's no secret that sometimes things don't go as planned. Stress, busy lives, it can all affect us. But here's a solution that's discreet, convenient, and made to help you regain that confidence. We're talking about Blue Chew, of course. 
They offer the same active ingredients as in Viagra or Cialis, but in a chewable form. And it's online, which means no more awkward doctor visits. It's prescribed by licensed physicians, so you know that you're getting the real deal. And it ships straight to your door in a discreet package. So now, because Blue Chew is sponsoring this show, I have a special deal for our listeners. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first order for free when you use my promo code HOLLY. Just pay $5 in shipping. Yes, that's free if you go to BlueChew.com and use my code HOLLY. Pay only $5 in shipping. Blue Chew is the confidence that you are looking for delivered straight to your door. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So, uh, Jada, so you know what movie I'm going to bring up. <laughs> yes. And it is a movie that I suddenly forgot the title of. It was for Digital Playground, and it was a Dungeons & Dragons, like, um, theme. And what the fuck was it called? I can't <laughs> believe I, I just know, forgot I just what it was like called. Two. It's just like an F. I keep thinking Flesh or Flash, but it was not that. Oh, my God. How do we not remember oh what it gosh, is? Oh, my gosh. I'm literally drawing, like, of mine. Oh, my God. Ernie, can, can you look it for up? me? Can you look it up? Digital Playground, Jada Stevens, Holly Randall. Does it start with an F? Maybe. I'm like, fuck. I don't know. I, I hate that I've done... <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons, or... I don't know. It should pop up. It should pop up. Quest. Yes! yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I knew it was one word. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you. Not an F. off. Yeah. <laughs> Way off. Like flesh. <laughs> quest. Oh my gosh. Okay. So quest. Um, how much do you remember from that day? I actually rem it's something I'm gonna remember probably for the rest of my life. Um, I just remember in a slight way, chainmail, mm, hot rocks, <laughs> and swords <laughs> and barefoot. <laughs> Oh, yes. So uh, Jada played a berserker. <laughs> and this was in a time when Digital Playground, like, literally didn't really consider, like, casting in terms of, like, who would work for certain roles. It was more just like, we want big names and we'll just throw them in anything and, like, who cares? Mm -hmm. um, so you were a berserker. You were with, it was with Derek, Derek. Pierce. You had to do sword fighting. Yes, which we learned briefly. Briefly before. for 20 minutes before. That's all I could get. I got like a sword master to Real come on swords. Set. Real <laughs> swords. And he was like, here's a 20 minute demo. Go. Right? You were in knee high, high heeled boots. Yes. On uneven um, dirt floor with wood chips. Yeah, which eventually we ended up taking them off and I was barefoot. But yeah, there was heels and then the chain mail was like real chain mail. It was like, and I was probably like, 115 pounds mm -hmm. at the time. So that was like so heavy in general, but it yes. looked so good. So, <laughs> so yes, it was also 115 degrees. Yes. It was the hottest day of the year. Yes. And it was the day that Netflix came to set and shot the fucking <laughs> Hot Girls Wanted documentary. Like that day, like the worst day. And we were just having all of these like scheduling problems. And I had to like shoot so much stuff that day but i remember about the chain mail specifically because so it was like a chain mail around here and then it was attached to a really heavy black cloak yeah and when you were in the sun mm -hmm. the chain mail was burning your skin yes because it was like the sun was like <laughs> so we would have to keep coming up to you and lifting the chain mail off of your skin so yeah. that like you wouldn't burn and, like, and just cooling me off i definitely yeah. remember a bunch of that and then like i just remember too it was so hot like outside like where we had to have sex was like on a rock. Yeah. So the rock was like so hot. And I just remember Derek, poor Derek. He was like moving all which ways to stay like that. Cause it's easier for a girl yeah. to to manage, right? Yeah, but yeah, the yeah. guy, he was like <laughs> moving all kinds of ways to make it comfortable for me. Bless his heart to this day. Yeah. That was a rough scene. And I remember too looking at where we were supposed to shoot because when I initially decided to shoot there, of course, like the whole scene took longer than we thought right. it was going to take. Do you remember the guy in like the full knight armor yeah. suit that like that we had to shoot too? Like that poor guy was literally he was in a real right knight, <laughs> like a real suit of armor for a knight, like right. metal, one hundred and fifteen out. It was fucking <laughs> wild. And then, um, so then, yeah, where I was going to shoot you guys, like on this, because we were in a field, so there wasn't like really anywhere around, and right. it's not like I could bring in a blanket or a bed. It was supposed to be, you know, <laughs> medieval time. So like it had to make sense. Right. 
Um, and so we were going to put you guys on this rock, but by the time we were ready to shoot, it was in full sun. Mm -hmm. Initially, it was in shade. And I was like, well, we could move over there, but blah, blah, blah. And and I remember you and Derek being like, it's fine. We'll just shoot in the sun. And I was like, are you sure? Because that looks horrible. And you guys were like, yes, we will do it. And you did it. Yeah. And I remember being so impressed and sitting in my director's chair in the shade, <laughs> dying. I was so miserable. And I was just like, how are they? How is this? How are they doing this? They're worse than I am. And I want to die. No, I definitely will remember that forever. But I remember it was also the first time I shot for you. So I definitely wanted to prove myself. But I think um, having Derek as a partner helped too. Yeah. Because he's, you know. He was amazing. Emotional support. He was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that we both cried at the end of that day? Yes. <laughs> we both cried. <laughs> but Netflix had left by then, so they missed they that missed part. They missed that part. I still get the most people all the time still hit me up. Is that, did I just see you on Netflix? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's still on there. Hot <laughs> Girls Wanted, um, Women on Top, and it was the very first episode. The which, best episode. Man. It was the best episode. The rest of them were. <laughs> yeah. I remember when that one came out, everyone was like, oh, this is great. Like Rashida, because Rashida Jones directed it. She finally got it right because everyone hated the first one. Right. And then when like the second one and the third one came out, everyone's tone changed. But ours was <laughs> fine. It was. Yeah, we didn't get a lot of criticism <laughs> for that. So that's good. So um, let's talk about your big life change that you've okay. recently had. You had a baby. I did. A baby boy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell us, Um, I mean, like, you know, as a woman, I always like to talk about these yeah. experiences because I have a three and a half year old mm -hmm. and it definitely changed my life. So tell me a little bit about like, how was pregnancy for you? How was the delivery for you? I am so lucky. I think, thank God every day. Um, my pregnancy was great. Um, my delivery was smooth. It's the easiest thing that it could have been, mm -hmm. you know, it's more of my challenges came after, mm -hmm. you know, like adjusting, but I had a good pregnancy. Like in the beginning, obviously was shitty, you know, mm -hmm. when your body's trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Mm -hmm. But then after that, super smooth, no crazy cravings, you know, didn't gain weight until like the last month. Wow, I you know, gained 50 pounds. Yeah, I mean, I definitely gained weight. I was like 165 when I had him. So mm -hmm. that's the biggest I've ever been in my life. But I didn't gain it until the, the last month. Yeah, you know, that's good. And then, um, you know, having him, I still will remember all the nurses in there like, you have some good muscles down there. I'm like, yeah, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you only knew, you know. <laughs> How long was your delivery? Um, Started like at 430. He was out by 444. So like, I mean, at, I was in labor all day, but I'm saying okay. he started pushing at 4.30. Okay. He was out by 4.44. Yeah, so, that was the same for me. It was about 10 minutes of yeah, pushing. Yeah, super simple. Like, but you hear so many crazy stories. Mm -hmm. I was more mortified than anything. Um, but yeah, everything was perfect. And I was like, you know, one stitch, still still pretty. You know? Yeah, <laughs> same. Yeah, I was, it was nine and a half hours for me from the start of labor yeah. to delivery. It was like so fast. Yeah, I pretty much slept all day. So like when I woke up, I went in at probably like three or four in the morning mm -hmm. and slept all day. And then like, like I said, that when they were like, oh, it's time. I'm like, oh no, she's like, it's too late now. You gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't really stop that train once it starts running. I was so scared though, you know, but it's crazy like what the body does naturally. Like yeah. once you find your rhythm, that's why I think like, a lot of people are in tuned with their body mm -hmm. so it's harder for them yeah. you know but i was like i'm very in tune i do kegels all the time i do things so once i found like the rhythm i was like oh he's out i'm he's coming out <laughs> did you have an epidural yeah yeah that was i best. had to, i had to i don't understand how people do it without i'm a pussy when it comes to pain so like even the girl that i heard down the hall for me was going crazy she she didn't have an epidural i was like that's my point i just i didn't want to bring any more trauma to my baby than it could have been so i was like it was made it the easiest thing i didn't like getting it done it yeah. was the most painful part of it yeah and you have to be like perfectly still i was like shaking uncontrollably too. she was like time. sit still i was like i am fucking sitting still same <laughs> i know my anesthesiologist was kind of a bitch me too that's why i was like you're being mean to me <laughs> like what the fuck? where'd you give birth um what is it henry mail okay i was at ucla yeah i wanted to i wanted cedar sinai i had it all planned out and i was like it didn't work didn't, that way yeah didn't make it did he come before you expected yeah he came like actually like he was supposed to be on the seventh and came on the second so oh wow yeah he was ready wow <laughs> was it just like 
did your water just break and you ran to the hospital or was I there woke slow? up I woke up and I was like oh something's wrong it was like really heavy you mm -hmm. know and we ended up going to the hospital and it, it broke there so I just okay. feel like everything happened yeah you know he was just ready to come yeah <laughs> yeah and then what was your what was your first reaction when you saw him I, it's honestly the most crazy trippy I, if i've ever said it, it was so trippy like because i actually pulled him out so you the, pulled him out yeah so the doctor he was like you know he had a like did his head like that he's like pull your baby out i'm like no he's like pull him out so i grabbed him and i pulled him out and just like i i can't it was like an out-of-body experience like wow. it was just amazing i didn't i've never thought that i would even like first of all if i would have never slowed down in life i was always chasing money and yeah just doing things, if I would have never slowed down, I would have never went through with it. You know, yeah. so I'm so happy that I did. I was meant to be a mom, like mm -hmm. I'm a great mom. And just that whole experience of holding him for the first time is just, it's just trippy. That's yeah. like crazier than any acid or anything I've ever tried. I was yeah. just like, oh my God, this is my baby. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So wait, did they not, did they put him on your skin right away? They mm -hmm. didn't like, yeah, no, suck right out away. the snot or anything. Right away, it was wow. just crazy. And then obviously they took him and um, got him, but I just didn't want him to leave the room. I was like, do everything right here, you yeah. know? Like, but yeah, I I was just, it's crazy. It's like an out-of-body experience. Like yeah. when after it comes, it's like, holy shit, I just pushed a human out. Like, yeah, <laughs> and I'm okay, I'm still yeah. here. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I had like dreamed of that moment when, you know, my baby would come out and I would see her for the mm -hmm. first time. And I had this vision of, you know, how like, it would be this magical moment <laughs> and I would be like, oh, my baby. And I, I ain't gonna lie, my <laughs> first thought, cause they're she was covered in all that white stuff. Yeah. Um, I forgot what it's called. Well, it's like your placenta after birth. Yeah, and like their skin's kind of shriveled from mm -hmm. being literally yeah. <laughs> in the utero for nine months. And they like brought her out and they're like, here's your baby. And I was like, oh, <laughs> don't touch me. Dude, my first thought was like, <laughs> she's all slimy. I was like, Can you just clean her off. Like, <laughs> oh my god yeah i mean it is it is it, like i said you could have this whole thing of how it's supposed yeah, to be and stuff yeah. and it never turns out no. how it's supposed to be but just a crazy experience i can't i don't i would maybe love to do it again one day but i'm just glad that i got to experience it yeah you know yeah no it was i mean it was definitely like i mean i was crying and my husband's crying and all that stuff but my first thought was oh my god she's so slimy and gross <laughs> like ew like ew <laughs> I was like worried. I was like, my my pictures, my photos, I look fat. Like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. <laughs> they're like, nobody's even caring about that right now. Like, I was so mad. Like, this is one thing I'll remember is like, I, I was supposed to go get my nails done that day. Yeah. And I was so mad that I didn't have my nails done and my toes and stuff like that. And they're like, really? Like, <laughs> I literally <laughs> blew my hair out before we went See, to the hospital. All my friends, they're like putting their makeup on. I didn't have any, no eyelashes, no makeup, no hair, um, one broken nail. I was like furious about that, but it didn't matter. <laughs> There's a, a a mutual. She's a model that I follow, and she just had a baby, and I, and she's very like social media savvy and mm -hmm. very like big. Um, and I just saw her like hospital photos with the baby, and she's like full glam. And I was like, you literally brought your makeup artist to <laughs> the hospital, and they did your face in the bed. Like I know it. Like there's no way that you looked like that through the right. whole delivery. Well, it was pretty funny. Well, my best friend is my makeup artist. So if I really wanted it, I could have had it because I had her there with me too. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, I yeah. was just in the moment. I really didn't give a fuck. I was like, I just want me to be okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I still have like all the pictures and photos and stuff like that. So yeah, of course. Be. So how was, I mean, how has it changed your life? It's definitely changed my whole entire life, you know, in, in the most challenging ways, but also like, it's just so much more purpose. Like you think that you have purpose and you think that, oh, I never want to have kids. Cause I've, I always said that I always was like, oh, I'm not going to have kids, you know, like I had my animals, like all my, yeah. my animals. <laughs> was but the pregnancy um, planned? No. Okay. So when no. you found out, what was your first thought? Like, holy shit, you know, yeah. like it's, but I also knew like, you know, previous times before I wasn't ready and the situation wasn't right. But this time in my life, like, I'm like, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like it's now or never, Yeah. Like, you know, I was 34. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I want to do this and I'm so glad I did, but it's definitely challenging. I mean, as far as like 
being, you know, having your own business, going back to work, like still being, I stayed at home with the first year with him, Mm -hmm. you know, and didn't work. I was blessed to take pretty much like, I took the whole pregnancy off and I took the first year off with him. Didn't work, didn't even think about it, didn't, Mm -hmm. you know, and I just feel like getting back to like reality, you're like, oh, you know, I got to get back to work. I got to start doing my things. And I'm also in front of the camera. So I feel like that was challenging too, to be bigger mm-hmm. than I was, even though I held my weight really well. And I think people like liked the thick side of me. Yeah. I, I wasn't comfortable, right. you know? So then you see all these things, bodies, perfections now, you know, like I'd never got a mommy makeover or tweaks or anything. So mm-hmm. I'm still dealing with you know, mm-hmm. things like I look amazing, but it's like still like you're in front of a camera. So I like critiqued myself. And I think that got to me at some points, you know, totally. Um, but those are like some of the challenging parts. And then, you know, partner for sure. Like you have to have a strong partner because things change totally after mm-hmm. the baby comes, you know? Yeah. You can be in honeymoon stages and, mm-hmm. you know, everything. But reality sets in when the baby's brought home. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but yeah, those are like my... I'm finally getting the hang of it though. Like, you know, he's almost two, but I'm fine. I found my rhythm getting back to like taking time and not feeling guilty about it. I yeah. still feel guilty, but yeah. I, I do Same. it. <laughs> like, Same. Getting back to trying to work out and just, you know, taking the day like for myself. And I'm lucky that I have a really good support system that helps me do that. You yeah. Know? Yeah. No, the guilt, I feel like that probably never entirely goes away. I mean, yeah, it was definitely hard for me to go back to work. I remember when I got pregnant, I was still shooting for twisties at the time. Mm -hmm. And I called them and I'm like, yeah, no worries. Like I'll be, you know, I'm just going to take maternity leave for like a couple months and I'll be right back to work. Like, you know, work is the most important thing to me. Like, (laughs) of course, I'm like not going to take that much time off. Like, Don't worry. I'll be right back at it. And yeah, I didn't expect my perspective to change so much. Yeah. Every, it's everything changes that yeah. afterwards, you know? So I, and I've always known you to be like work, work, work. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much what I was too. So I was like, just enjoy my time, just try to chill. And then, then you don't want to go to work. Like I was like, oh, I don't even, even when I would yeah. step out for like, I went, I did a convention just to get my feet yeah. wet, right? Two hours. I was like, oh, you know, got to go. And yeah. then like, I ended up going to Vegas for Avian and I brought the whole family. Yeah. I had them a whole unit, like in the other, <laughs> other side of the strip or whatever. But I was like, oh, well, I'm ready to go. Like I was just never, you yeah. know, two hours was too long. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, when I went to Avian for the first time last year, I went this year too, but yeah, that was the longest I was ever away from Violet. And I felt like horrible about it yeah i still like i can remember the first because it was like a two-day thing i was like oh go on this trip or whatever mm-hmm. for a convention i cried i cried and like every time i sat still i cried so i was like i need to just stay busy yeah and i still like get my guilty moments but i've i'm able to leave for four days that's yeah. my that's my max right now yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know it's it's hard and it's like i've been working a lot lately so she's been more clingy than mm-hmm. usual and um the other day she told me that she wanted to be my assistant so she could oh come to work goodness. with me <laughs> and i was like i mean first of all obviously no yeah but secondly <laughs> like you know what i mean and then and then she'll say stuff to me you know it's just funny how kids really kind of remind you about like they shift your perspective on life and remind you what's important yeah because i remember she said to me this is a couple months ago she was like she's like mommy she's like when i grow up i want to what would she say she said i want to work so i can I want to grow up so I can work and make money. <laughs> and I was like, like, she doesn't know what money is. Right. She doesn't like understand what work is. Yeah. She just knows that like, that's what I go and do all the time. Mm-hmm. And so she's like, and I'm just like, don't hurry, you know, like yeah. enjoy what you have mm-hmm. in this moment, you know, like work will come soon enough. But I remember growing up telling me that when I was a kid and you don't want to listen. Yeah. You can't wait to grow up. I wanted to grow up so fast. Yeah. Like, and I, that's the, be a kid as long as you can. Like, yeah. You know, like I grew up so fast. Like at 15, I was already moved out the house, had a job, like, you know. Yeah. Definitely waited until yeah. I was like 19 or 20 years old. Yeah. Stay at home with mommy. I know. Um, But yeah, like, and it does remind you of what's important and like, and how like, I don't know, like not saying that our job is not important, but it really isn't in the grand scheme of the world. And like, yeah, it, it just gives you more purpose. That's all I can say is like the best decision I ever made, but definitely the most challenging yeah for sure i definitely feel like i just there's a lot of things that i used to care about that i don't care about anymore like Same. drama mm-hmm. like the drama that goes on like on twitter or whatever yeah. i just like i just don't care yeah i don't either and i've always been like that like i've never 
been in the mix. Like I've mm -hmm. always, I feel like the black sheep of the industry. Mm -hmm. Like I'm here and you, yeah. you see me, but I'm not. But I definitely take my, um, you know, stay in a bubble. And I feel like even more now than ever, I like definitely do my thing and then just pop out for work when yeah. I want to. Yeah. But yeah. So have you thought about, um, I mean, you know, being a sex worker and being a mom, I'm sure you've thought about like yeah. that conversation, how you're going to handle it. Yeah, it <laughs> mortifies me, to be honest with you. I go to therapy over this, like, you know, but I just feel like when it's time and when he when he's ready, like he's going to tell me because I'm going to ask him mm -hmm. when he's ready, if he mm -hmm. wants to know, you know, but just to come at them with like, you know, confidence and not shame. There's mm -hmm. nothing shameful about it, even though that's like how I still perceive sometimes but it's like it's it's terrifying i feel like i would have been more terrified having a girl you know yeah interesting like, and i was so scared that i was going to get a girl i'm like my karma i'm going to get a little girl just like me badass little just like me <laughs> but you know i can see still the karma in the little boy just like me but i just want you know it's terrifying to be honest with you but i yeah. know that the worlds came so much further than when we grew up as the stigma for that yeah so i'm hoping for the best like I don't really worry about bullying as much because bullying can happen to any any kid. Doesn't yeah. have to, your mom doesn't have to be a sex worker to be bullied, you yeah. know. But I am gonna teach him to like, you know, chop some people in the throat. I yeah, too. yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> my my mother taught me when I was young to kick boys in the balls, but then make sure you run away really fast. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Because when they stand back up, they're gonna that. punch you. <laughs> like Lynn, I remember I remember being I was still in elementary school when she like sat me down and told me that, and I was like. <laughs> Okay, thanks. <laughs> so long. Keep that yeah, in kid, mind. Kids are fucking mean, so that's gonna happen regardless. But yeah. I just, I do like love the fact that we've came so much further. Like, porn is accepted so much more. Like when mm -hmm. I first got in the industry, like the internet really didn't sit yet. So like, I was like, oh, nobody's gonna know. I'm gonna go do these scenes real quick. Mm -hmm. My whole hometown knew. Of course. I'm like, oh, you're a fucking whore. You're fucking black guys on camera. Da 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 da. And now like all those same people kiss my ass. Yeah. I think I'm like, you know, and I just think it's crazy how far that's came. So that makes me, gives me a little bit of, uh, yeah. You know. I think also too, I mean, kids are going to react to things based on what they're taught and mm -hmm. how they're raised. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I was, and I can say this confidently having been raised by parents who worked in the porn industry, like mm -hmm. I was never instilled with that sense of shame yeah. around sex mm -hmm. and around the porn industry. Like most people are. Yeah. So it just was never like a big deal to me. Yeah. And know? that's like how I want to raise him. I want yeah. him to be very open minded to most things. Um, you know what I mean? But I want him to be comfortable with that. I want him to know that also to sacrifices that mm -hmm. I've taken, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because there are a lot of sacrifices and that with the industry that you give, you know what I mean? Yeah. To have what you have and the things that you have. I didn't grow up with any of those things, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I think um, I think definitely being like honest and just, you know, not not raising them with shame. And I I also feel that these days we have so much more in terms of resources yeah. in how to like raise children and how to, mm -hmm. you know, be good parents than our parents did. Like yeah. they didn't have anything any of that. Yeah. <laughs> and now we have like a wealth of information. Right. You know, I mean, yeah. I have like all of these mom accounts that I follow on Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, with all like the little like big little feelings yeah. and, you know, all of these um, advice. I've like listened to podcasts and read books and mm -hmm. and just helps you understand what it's like to be a kid, why they behave a certain way and, and how to like deal with that. And yeah. I just think about how our parents never had any of that. No, they just disposal. did the best that they could, you know. They did. They did. <laughs> So I think it's I think it's a good time to, you know, mm -hmm. to be a mom these days. Absolutely. Um, so how are you passionate? What are you passionate about besides your kid, obviously, um, outside of sex work? I love animals. I work with LaBelle Foundation. I work with a few of them and foster and work at adoption placements. And I'm working on a nonprofit foundation of my own. So, like, I'm very passionate about that, even though it's, like, not something that is very giving financially. It's mm -hmm. something that I'm still working towards for when I totally retire. Mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. You wanna, and this, is this like dogs specifically uh, or dogs all and animals. cats? I would love to do like wildlife. Like my mm -hmm. nonprofit, I'm really planning because I wanna do like a little bit more like exotic animals, mm -hmm. but dogs, of course, dogs, cats, like that's what I'm into now. Yeah. 
So how many dogs do you have at home? <laughs> well, I just <laughs> got rid of a few. I found them good homes, but I did have four dogs and four cats, but now I have four cats and a dog. <laughs> and your son, I'm sure, loves them. He loves them. Like, he's – my cat's – like, it's so crazy. He's so gentle. It's like he knew my cat used to always sit on my stomach and need mm. and like knew. And, you know, when he first came home, he was kind of like, you know, I'm still the baby. But now, like, they all coincide and it's so cute to see. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, it's 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 really nice to raise kids with with animals. Um, You know, we actually live on a ranch. So mm -hmm. we like Violet. There's like bugs. And actually, yesterday we went for a walk and, and my husband caught a frog and gave it to Violet and she's she holding it, it and it like jumped on her and she was like, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Marsha hates frogs. I sent her a photo. Marsha's sitting out there going, no, fuck that. I sent her a photo of Violet like holding a frog. And Marcia's like, no. No, it says a lot when kids are like, you know, mm -hmm. good around animals and whatnot. And I definitely, I'm like a foster failure. So like I would foster and then keep them. And I'm like, okay, I can't yeah. keep doing this. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, let me find you a really good home for some of them. But it's so rewarding too. And I want him to have like the same respect and love for animals too. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you have given advice on another podcast to save and invest your money. Mm -hmm. um, is that a lesson that you learned like the hard way at the beginning of your career? Or have you always been good about money? No, definitely didn't come from money. So didn't know like I, and I always made money even dancing. Like it's a, a mentality of making it the next day. You'll spend it because you're going to make it, you know. So I definitely learned it the hard way. Learned it the hard way with taxes. Like, you know, yeah. not having the right people around me as well to mentor me. I learned, I got a good mentor like a little bit later in life and that's a blessing because it taught me everything I know Yeah. now. Isn't it wild how in school they don't teach you anything about finances? Nothing. Like that makes me crazy. It, that's what they need to be teaching because yeah. especially like when you don't, when you go to like having no, or coming, no money to making thousands of dollars a day mm -hmm. at the time, you know what I mean? Like you at 18, I had no business making yeah. that money, yeah. you know, and not knowing what to do with it. So I was like, oh, let me spend it, you know? Yeah. So I think they should definitely be more savvy with financial. But just like even teaching kids about like taxes. Yeah. And like, you know, what that means and mm -hmm. checkbook and like how to open a bank account and yeah. just like and basic it, life skills that like we need. Like, Yeah. They definitely teach stuff that really, I don't even use anything. Like definitely with math, like I'm good with my money, like it's yeah. numbers, but yeah. any, all that other stuff I haven't even used since I walked out yeah. of school. So I just think that they should definitely teach more of financial and like investment and like just planning, financial yeah. planning, Yeah, you know, because yeah. you make great money and it's like you realize like I probably made a couple million dollars in my early 20s and mm -hmm. blew all through it. You yeah. Know? So but I'm lucky, obviously, to bounce back and still do. But you just think about what could have been done mm -hmm. if you would have had the right team or whatever. Yeah. You know? So now that you're back to shooting, are you shooting like studio porn again or are you just shooting for your own sites? I actually started a production, my own production um, and distribu uh, distribution under Jules Jordan um, in 2020. So mm -hmm. it got a slow start. I honestly should felt like I should have did it a long time ago, but mm -hmm. I finally did it when I had the right team you know well, what I mean? 2020 was a weird year it was and I we had we couldn't shoot the whole year yeah. so it was just really odd you know but I'm glad that I got like my team everything that makes it successful so I'm shooting for my production and a couple mainstream that I've always like have took care of me mm -hmm. I'm probably going to shoot a couple scenes for them but pretty much for my stuff mm -hmm. you know like directing has been fun but I think that my fans want to see me perform of yeah. course yeah <laughs> what is the like the biggest difference between directing and performing the difference uh, well, financially for me, the difference, mm -hmm. um, but it's just a different, I guess, like thought process as a, it's hard for me as a director. Cause I'm always wanting to show mm -hmm. how to do it and yeah. what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, let me, and nobody's going to really be able to do it. Like how you do it, you right. know what I mean? Yep. But, and really just sitting back and letting people do it. That's mm -hmm. hard for me. Yeah. Like it just is. So that's probably the difference, the biggest difference for me financial and then, you know, control. <laughs> what is um, the most challenging thing about directing and what's the most rewarding? I guess like coming out, there's so much now that, mm -hmm. that you have to consume is like for me is like being creative and keeping that creative flow to do different stuff and it not turn out the same. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just so much. Yeah. You know, I think that's been like my and being busy and like having life and still creating, trying to create, you know. Yeah. And then also, too, I mean, there's a lot more responsibility as a director. As a mm -hmm. performer, you just show up. You're only yeah. responsible for you 
in your yeah, performance. I'm over here writing everybody's check and I don't get a check right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know that feeling. <laughs> All too well. <laughs> but it is. Like, it is, it's totally different. I You definitely enjoy being a performer. Yeah. More, I feel. Yeah. You know, being coming from that. If you don't know that, you wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. So now that, um, you know, you've, like, lived this whole full life, performer, directing, mom, how do you, like, take time for yourself and kind of take care of your own mental health with everything going on? I definitely do. I go to therapy multiple times a month. I love therapy. I feel like it's my only way to, like, exert all my my thoughts. And then I do, like, mental health days, which is what I call them. Go to the spa, mm -hmm. you know, massage six hours. Like, I'll literally go all day trying to get back in my workout. I used to work out all the time, but obviously it's really hard yeah. having a baby. But I've been trying to get back into that once or twice a week. But those are all things that I love. You know, I love going hiking. I love being outside. So just trying to get back to things that make me feel whole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got a lot more to balance now. Yeah, and balance has never been my strong um, <laughs> feature in life. So learning it now is like crazy. Yeah, I feel like it's a lifelong challenge for mm -hmm. all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jada, thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you for having me. It was such a pleasure and congratulations thank on you so much. all these changes in your life. Um, I do have a bunch of questions for my Patreon members, which we will do in a separate segment, as we always do, available only on my Patreon at uh, patreon.com slash Unfiltered. But in the meantime, uh, Jada, can you let everybody know where they can find you online? Yes. On my Instagram is two cheeks back again, and my Twitter is Jada Stevens 420. And then the cheeks is with a Z, right? Yeah, cheeks with a Z. Okay, I because I was actually trying to find your Instagram <laughs> earlier and it didn't work until I put yeah, the Z. Yeah, two I was like, cheeks. Oh, okay. Back. And then of course you guys can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Holly Randall and on TikTok I think it's at Holly Randall seventy eight or Holly Randall and filter. I don't know. You know, just go to hollylinks.com and like all my social media. Um, links are there. So, you know, it's the easiest way to find me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next week.